Radon Environmental's Radon Potential Map of Canada. For the past 20 years, Canada's neighbour to the south has led the way in radon education and public awareness. In 1993, the U.S. Geological Survey published the Generalized Geologic Radon Potential Map of the United States, which has since served as a model for countries around the world. Surprisingly, Canada did not have a radon map like the United States until 2011 when Radon Environmental published the Radon Potential Map of Canada. In 2010, our geologists teamed with geoscience professionals to develop the first geologic radon potential map. The objective was to illustrate the relative variation of risk across the country, increase public awareness, and ultimately reduce the number of deaths caused by radon-induced lung cancer. We felt the absence of a radon map was a significant gap in the information available to Canadians. The core methodology of the Canadian map was largely based on the U.S. Geological Survey approach to the development of their map. The framework is the database of the geologic map of North America, which covers 29,000 individual map polygons describing the distribution of 700 map units. Several data sets common to both Canada and the U.S. were identified geology, geophysics, and geochemical survey information. Geological units form the basic framework for the Canadian map. It is the geology that largely controls the amount of uranium present in any given location and therefore the radon. GIS processing was used to evaluate each rock unit contained in the geology data set with respect to its U.S. radon potential classification, its uranium geochemistry, and its radiometric geophysical response. These three major parameters were then used to classify the Canadian landmass. The final step was to select messaging to accompany the map that would best illustrate radon as a national hazard while reinforcing the need to test regardless of zone. To accomplish this, we defined the risk in each zone as relative, leaving out references to predictive average readings, which can be misleading. Next, we matched the zones with a corresponding human alert level guarded, elevated, and high. And finally, we reinforced the need to test regardless of geographical region or zone. Overlay geography on the radon potential map, and it is evident large centers of high population density and land use are in high radon hazard zones. Significant radon hotspots can be found in every province from coast to coast, in and around Canada's major cities like Calgary, Toronto, and Ottawa. What implications might this have for how and where we grow our food or obtain our water supply? Another consideration, uranium contamination of common building materials, such as cement aggregate and granite, which can be a source of radon brought into our homes from other regions of the country. With this map, it is important to look at the impact on populations in high-risk zones. Gauging appropriate actions for communities in these areas needs to be a priority for all levels of government. One population to look at is First Nations, as many reserves are situated in potential radon hotspots. The Tobique First Nations in New Brunswick were recently highlighted in the news following a survey conducted on their land, which lies in an elevated radon potential zone. Roughly half the homes tested had radon levels above the Canadian guideline. Canada's first radon potential map was created by a team of geoscience professionals analyzing a precise set of survey data through GIS processing. The implications for this map are far-reaching and will change the way Canadians think about their health in the years to come. The map is a fundamental tool in encouraging testing in all regions of the country. For more information, visit RadonCorp.com. Radon Environmental, committed to a healthy future.